Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another interesting video uh, and this time I have chosen uh, uh, to do a video on forced oscillations because many of you might be aware that from JE 2023 forced oscillations is going to be part of JE Advanced and not uh, very good literature, I mean in JE literature not very good problems are available on forced oscillations and that's why I decided to take up this problem. This is problem number 8.67 from Merriam Craig's Dynamics textbook. So without much ado, let me straight away get into the problem. So here's the problem. Let's read. Okay. So derive the equation of motion for mass m in terms of variable x for the system shown. So here's the system. Here's a block of mass m and here it is pivoted at point A to this massless link. Uh, L shaped rod is there which can pivot freely about point O and here again uh, the C is a pivot where a spring is joined and this end of the spring is uh, moving horizontally left and um, uh, left and right and uh, the displacement of this end is given as XB is equal to B naught cos omega D so that's given okay and of course uh, there's a damper this yellow colored thing is a damper and uh, as this block goes up and down up and down uh, there will be a damping force acting from here and c is the damping coefficient okay so let me read the question completely now okay so did I derive the equation of motion for mass m in terms of variable x for the system shown neglect the mass of the lever aoc and assume small oscillations okay so this is negligible mass the right end of the spring with constant k2 is being moved simple harmonically as shown in the figure as uh, we say, said here neglect gravity also find the steady state amplitude of x so this variable uh, the oscillating x is varying with uh, sinusoidally with the time and i want to find out the amplitude of the variable x okay so if you want you can give it a try i'll get into my analysis right away okay let's see so here uh, let's have a look at the dynamics of the thing let's say at some instant this uh, lever ha has turned through some angle theta so if this angle is theta then of course uh, this angle is also theta so uh, the up the vertical rise is a theta and uh, a theta we are calling as x a theta is x and uh, this horizontally will go by a distance this is b and this is theta so this goes down by b theta okay and uh, since x is a theta so we can say that theta is nothing but uh, theta is x by a so b theta simply becomes uh, b x by a so that's what i've written so linear displacement of the left end of the spring is b x by a so i hope this much is clear okay and of course its velocity then will be what the derivative of this will simply be b x dot by a that's the velocity of the left end of uh, the uh, spring k2 okay so if that much is clear then uh, i can go ahead and uh, let's look at what i've written so imagine the linkage to be bent by a small angle theta then x is a theta as i just now said spring force now becomes what that becomes k2 into b naught cos omega t minus bx by a so let that needs some explanation see this end is moving with b naught cos omega t and this end has moved by bx by a so what is the total stretching in the spring the so stretching is b naught cos omega t and minus bx by a. this much is the stretching in the spring why because because movement of the front end causes an elongation of b naught cos omega t but then elongation reduces because of movement of the uh, uh, pin joint c so total elongation is b naught cos, cos omega t minus bx by a and of course then spring force is nothing but uh, k2 times uh, b uh, b naught cos omega t and minus bx by a so that's what i had written so this is my spring force okay k2 into b naught cos omega t minus bx by a okay now uh, what's the mechanical energy of the k1 and the mass system so now my system is just this much okay and uh, all uh, things external to this or maybe i can consider this plus uh, this linkage is anyway massless doesn't carry any mechanical energy so this is my system so what i'm going to do i'm going to write the mechanical energy of this system and then rate of change of mechanical energy i'm going to equate it to the uh, power developed by this uh, spring force k2 as well as power developed by the damper force which will be cx dot okay 
so uh, okay so mechanical energy is half k1 x square plus half m x dot square so this is the spring potential energy in the spring k1 okay uh, half k1 x square and of course the velocity of this one will be what this velocity is x dot and half mv square becomes half m x dot squared right so that's what i've written kinetic energy of this one is half m x dot square and this is the spring potential energy half k1 x square okay so what's the rate of change of mechanical energy i just take the derivative of equation 3 so i can say dme by dt becomes k1 x x dot plus m x dot x double dot uh, so i'm sure all of you know that x dot i'm i mean dx by dt and by x double dot i mean d square x by dt square these are the newton's conventions for writing derivatives okay so this is the rate of change of mechanical energy and this must be equal to the power developed by the damper and the spring of constant k2 okay so what's the power developed by the damper so that also we can understand see the damping force here is what so uh, if it is moving upward with velocity x dot so the damping force is downward and that is equal to c times x dot why because the standard notation b times v if b is the damping quotient and v is the velocity the damping force becomes b times v so in our case b is replaced by c and velocity is x dot so x dot so force becomes c x dot and force is acting in the downward direction opposite to the velocity so power developed becomes c x dot into x dot in with a minus sign why because it's a cos 180 factor because of uh, force and velocity being in the uh, mutually opposite directions okay so so my so power developed by the uh, damper force simply is minus c x dot squared okay so i hope that's clear so so power developed by the damper is uh, minus c x dot square and power developed by the uh, k2 spring so i told you that the force was k2 into b0 cos omega t minus bx by a and this you need to multiply by the velocity of the point of action of this force so you see uh, this velocity so uh, displacement is bx by a so velocity is b times x dot by a just take the time derivative of the displacement of n c so b x dot by a so that's what i've written here you can see uh, so this is the spring force and multiplied by velocity force dot velocity becomes the power okay so now i have rate of change of mechanical energy and i have power developed by the external forces and the uh, and the two must be equal by work energy theorem right so rhs of 4 must be equal to rhs of equation 5 so i can just equate the rhs of 4 with rhs of 5 and you can see uh, i can cancel off an x dot because x dot is featuring in every term you see there's an x dot here there's an x dot here then in x dot squared there is a one x dot and here again there is x dot so you can cancel off x dot and rearrange collect the terms so you can collect the x double dot terms in one place x dot terms in one place and x terms in one place and take rest of the thing to the right hand side to arrange in the standard form so if you just rearrange the equate rhs of these two equations and rearrange and cancel off x dot this is what you get okay so this is our equation mx double dot plus cx dot plus k1 plus k2 b square by a square times x is equal to k2 b by a into b naught cos omega t and this is our desired differential equation that was the first part of the question and now of course we can compare it with our standard uh, forced oscillation uh, uh, shm differential equation okay shm de so that is the standard equation is mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx is equal to f naught cos omega t and we can now uh, compare the equivalence m is of course m c becomes uh, b and uh, k becomes uh, uh, k1 plus k2 b square by a square this becomes the k effective and of course f naught is uh, this much k2 b uh, a by a into b naught this is our f naught okay and of course we know the standard solution to the equation 7 and we can just uh, plug and chug now so uh, equation 7 has got a standard solution which is given in NCRT and I have copied as it is the expression from NCRT. So amplitude is F0 divided by M square into this is the natural frequency squared as per NCRT so K by M minus omega square. Uh, NCRT write this as uh, omega driver so it's one and the same thing uh, a little change in notation that's all and plus omega square B square whole to the power half and of course you can substitute everything M is uh, known m is here and as b is uh, your c and k is your this term okay so this is your k and uh, f naught is this this is your f naught okay and uh, I, I did not uh, write it out in the expanded form to avoid the, the expression being messy but i hope uh, 
you understood this and uh, uh, that was my analysis of uh, Merriam Craig problem 8.67 from dynamics I hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you did enjoy the analysis please do give a thumbs up to my uh, video and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through telegram whatsapp discord or uh, whatever medium you might be using for networking with your fellow students and most importantly if you've not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel right away because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video almost every day thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you